Hello, everyone. Welcome to an action-packed edition of ARG Presents. I'm your boy, Amigo Aaron. Joined by a man who, ironically, we refer to as the Mega Schmuck. I give you the Brent. I prefer Cougar Schmuck. Thank you. <laughs> See, that, clearly you missed the joke there, a friend. Mega Schmuck. Yeah, never mind. So Yeah, I, I want to be called the Cougar Schmuck. Listen, I'm not calling you Cougar anything, pal. Oh. If you missed last week's, and what an episode that was, Brent, we spun the wheel. We made the exciting deal, the interesting deal, the brain-bending deal. And Brent, this week, in another turn of your uh, moronic picks, we'll be playing games on the Mega Duck slash Cougar Boy, Brent. The Mega yes. Duck slash Cougar Boy. This is far and away the stupidest named episode we've ever we've ever ventured into, my friend. What do you know? It's up there. <laughs> what did you know, I should say, about the Mega Duck slash Cougar Boy? When you this did... one I was actually somewhat versed in. You're kidding I, me. I knew, I knew where they were released. I knew uh, who made them. Uh, I, I, I'd seen them before, and I was ready to do this. Uh, I've been ready to do it for a while. I, I was uh, kind of pumped. Kind of pumped to get in there to see what the uh, the Mega Duck slash Cougar Boy could give us. I was not pumped because those names don't <laughs> instill confidence in me. I'm not. I've never played on a duck based console. I'd say, and, or Cougar based for that man. <laughs> so <laughs> there you go. Now, from what I can find, the more predominant of the two is the Mega Duck, uh, but uh, uh, the Cougar Boy is out there, and these are simply. Uh, Effectively, they're different names on the different plastics of the same thing. So, exact same everything. Yeah, we'll refer to them as the Mega Duck and Cougar Boy interchangeably. So, don't be surprised. So, <clears throat> Brent, I, lo- I know you're stud here. I looked up some facts. I had to educate myself on the nature of the Mega Duck slash Cougar Boy. You you may be stunned to to uh, hear this, Brent, but these uh, these come from the Far East, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Manufactured you- by an outfit called Wellback Holdings. Uh, released in August 27th of 93, simultaneously in Europe and Brazil. Now, in Europe, you got your you got your Mega Duck. In Brazil, uh, this was distributed by Cougar USA, ironically. That's and right. And so they changed the name down there to Cougar Boy. So there's where you get your two names. All right, so I tried well, to... Do you know why Mega Duck is called Mega Duck? No, please. Well, why is it called Mega Duck? It is a play off of Wander Swan. <laughs> You're kidding me. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. And of course, You're... Cougar Boy is a play off of Game Boy. So that's you had Wonder Swan, a beautiful Swan's a beautiful creature, uh, full of wonder. So they went with Mega Duck. That's correct. I love that. That's the best thing I've ever heard. Uh, <laughs> so I tried to find out what these things sold for. Right, so I found this, and I found the uh, the introductory price, but it was in the money of the Netherlands. I think they, I think they have florins at the time. It's 129 florins. I just, I did some uh, basic math, you know, and I came <laughs> they up were with 4.3 million dollars from what I could come up with. 129 Netherlands florins. I think those are florins. FL. I think that's a. I think they don't even use that money anymore. But they use they use it ninety three. That translates to seventy U.S. buckery dues, which is about one hundred twenty seven bucks today. So that seems probably about right. You know, one would guess seventy dollars for a handheld. So this thing had a Intel eighty eighty CPU running at one point or four point one nine megahertz. Yep, sixteen K of memory, Brent. Plenty of memory for your Mega Duck uses. In my opinion. Oh, yeah, because you got the cards. That's right. Uh, you also had uh, graphics that took up 160 by 144 pixels. A built-in speaker. Now, we're going to we're gonna get into the details of this, but I'm going to tell you right now. Having looked at one of these Mega Ducks slash Cougar Boys, uh, the, the, the screens were forged in the depths of Hades, Brent. These things are no good. Yeah. The, and the, the speakers are... were forged two doors down. Also yeah. horrible. It's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. Yeah. Uh, this thing had, uh, for your controls, you had these four. This uh, I think I saw one guy refer to them as Tic Tacs. I think that's an apt 
description of what yep. your directional keys look like. You've got an A, a B, a select, and start. And this thing is powered by four AA batteries, or you can get the optional uh, six volt AC adapter. So there you go. Uh, very there's there's as from what I could tell, there were three of these type. There were there were three known variations. There was a black and a white uh, Mega Duck, and then there was also a white uh, Cougar Boy. So you had one white Cougar Boy, you had a black Mega Duck and a white Mega Duck. I did not see any black Cougar Boys, although they, you never know uh, how that <laughs> how that's going to go. You got some pretty decent uh, game time. Uh, from what I read, fifteen hours on one set of four AA batteries. Do you think I've that's... heard that's I've heard that's incredibly exaggerated. You're not buying it? No, no. I, I, I it is probably closer to half that. I see. I see. Well, anyway, you might be right. Uh, I saw a fella take these apart. <laughs> the Mega Duck has a multi board design in in there. Uh, and you've got which is not which I looked at it looked though it looked as cheap as you would expect in, in inside there. One thing this does though, and this is interesting, is that they use some sort of graphical abilities to have basically they can use this LCD to have multi planar displays, Brent. Yeah, uh, and they do do this, and what they what yep. they'll use this for is to have like a sort of like a a, a background uh, scroll. That were a parallel, behind, yeah, you know? and it's it's not bad, is it? No, it, it well, I mean, from what we've seen, obviously, we do not own a, a Mega Boy, so Mega, Mega uh, Duck. How dare you? No, I I, I just meshed the two. Now, uh, you're you're right, and we and uh, we won't own one, as I'll <laughs> mention later on. But uh, yeah, these things, they're it it I, it's funny. This is one of those consoles, and I've read that this is very close. Uh, to the uh, select divisions, like the uh, that we covered uh, a while was it Watara, so, mm -hmm. or, you know one of those. It's it's very similar to that in in in, in design, um, but this is one of those consoles that when you emulate it, it looks it looks great, really. Yeah. When you when you play a real one, it don't no. look great. It don't no. look great. It looks like very bad screens. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> what, very bad speakers. You know, after looking into these, what what impressed you and what didn't impress you about these things? Uh, I, I mean, you mean on uh, a real console or on the emulator? Either way. Well, on the emulator, holy crap, the games are incredible. Uh. In real life, holy crap, the hardware is absolute trash. Yeah, yeah. It's unfortunate because some of the games uh, that were produced and some of the sound and music that was produced on this thing, incredible. Yeah. Um, it was surprising. The, I mean, the, the capabilities were there, weren't they? Yes. Yeah, I mean, you can tell that some people actually tried to make games and make fun games and... Uh, you know, did good sprite work and good music work, and then the hardware just wasn't there. The uh, it's it is a shame that the LCD, <clears throat> excuse me, that the LCD is so crummy. Uh, and the and I will say, I mean, the speaker. Again, I looked at uh, we don't have one, so I watched as many videos as I could of people actually demonstrating the actual hardware, and it was the same on every video. the The screen was real muddy, and the and which, of course, these things are, you know, going on, what, 27 years old. Uh, but uh, the screen was muddy, and the speaker was just El Cheapo Grande. Something, it, something tells me you could go in yeah. here and modify this thing and probably have a decent little handheld if you put a more modern screen, which if you can. you know, if you Of course. I mean, if you're going to do that, just retro-pie it and, you know, well, call it a day. From what I read... But I understand. From what I read, a lot of the games on this... I actually got like Game Boy ports, and some of them actually got ported to actual consoles. You know, so, so you know, if you're interested in some of these games, you could probably find a pretty good version. And let's face facts here: let's not uh, try to uh, pull a wool over anyone's eyes. A large chunk, a large percentage of the games on this thing were just ripoffs of other games. You know, yeah, absolutely. In, in the in the true fashion of the, of the day, they just basically they ripped off stuff. Excuse me. So let's let we both had a look at one of these games here. Uh, Brent, I'm going to let you start the show today uh, with your with your pick here for the Mega Duck slash Cougar Boy. What do you got for us? I 
<clears throat> as I was flipping through, I was playing a bunch of different uh, games, right? Yeah. And I would click on a game. I would let it load up. I would, you know, maybe play a, a minute or two or let the demo run if it had one. And when I clicked on my game, Railway, the opening theme was so incredible that I cranked the volume and bothered my wife because I let it Dangerous. run for like I'll, I'll I'll let it run for at least ten minutes just jamming to the tunes. Yeah, that old I don't like thirty style tunes. I was just pumped, loved it, absolutely loved it. And I was did before I even played the game. I said this is what I'm playing because the music on this opening screen is that awesome. Yeah, and it is. The music in this game is incredible. Absolutely incredible. Uh, so Railway was a uh, cartridge CB019. So it, it's one of those things where they listed all the games as numbers. In fact, they uh, actually with, listed some numbers. They, they made room for numbers that never got made. So clearly there yes. was more coming, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and it was produced, uh, the publisher was Creatonic, and the developer was Sashin, uh, released in 1993. Let's be honest with what we have here. This is a uh, Pipe Dreams, a Pipe Mania game with a railroad theme. And you lay down track, and every board has you getting from point A to point B, and you have to uh, lay down a certain number of tracks as denoted by the level to comp to be able to complete it. <clears throat> so sometimes your point A to point B could be, you know, two or three tracks away, just real easy, just loop it right around or something. But you have to lay the level required amount of tracks to actually complete the level. Uh, a lot of people hate on this game for two two reasons. Uh, reason number one is there is no penalty for overlaying a track on a track that's already there. Normally in Pipe Dreams or something like that, when you do that, it will uh, blow up and it will take several seconds and you'll lose points and it, it makes the game more challenging. This, you can just rapid fire over and over and over to get to the piece that you need. Um, Second reason why this game is usually frowned upon is the difficulty. It is pretty darn easy, uh, especially starting out. Um, usually the first four levels, uh, any brain-dead monkey can complete. Uh, and then it gets harder and more difficult as it puts new uh, aspects onto the board, if it's rocks, trees, tunnels... Uh, things that you can go through and get extra points, that sort of thing. So uh, you have to get at least 10 levels in, and really, even then, it's pretty easy at that point. Uh, but you have to get that far in before the game starts getting complicated. The absolute cool part of the game, though, is it's not a brain burner. It's not a pipe dreams, oh my god, I'm going to die. Every move is a stressful move. I'm putting pipes all over the place just to get them in my way. I don't care if I lose points for them at the end. This is a very down-to-earth, slow-paced, get your train out there, try to make this complicated uh, track system, because it encourages you to uh, experiment in ways that would allow you to make loops to get extra points and and really push for you being more complicated rather than the game force you to be complicated. And there's a positive and a negative to that, in my opinion. Another thing that it does is it does allow you to, every five stages, you get a bonus stage. And in the bonus stage, you, um, instead of guiding a train to the end you guide the conductor to the train. So I thought that was pretty awesome. Uh, it gives you power-ups. Uh, you can get power-ups 
on doubling your scores of your track lanes on the next level or any level you choose. You can stop time. You can slow down the train. You can give yourself more time at the beginning of a level, uh, and you can get extra men. All that's super awesome, and the way they do it is also pretty awesome because you don't just uh, get it. You have to go through different stations with your little uh, conductor to pick up these bonuses. I thought that was a really nice touch. Uh, all the while, when you're playing the game, there's, I think, four different music tracks that are absolutely stunning, uh, especially considering what this is. And you can just completely lose yourself in the moment. I absolutely love this game. This might be my new favorite Pipe Mania type game. If I'm not looking for a challenge, if I'm just looking to make these crazy extravagant levels. And it has a password system. So every 10 levels you get a password. So if you want to just come back and play the harder levels, you can. I mean, it's it's an almost perfect package from beginning to end. Um, <laughs> well, it's a clone. So right there, there's that. There, and every it, system, it is a clone, but it does its own thing. Every too. system we've ever covered had a version of this. Everything. So now, is this a playable version? Yes. In fact, they they've it's well, some would say a flawed version due to the uh, due to the the way you pick the track. Uh, I mean, it's it's the representation on the screen is nice. The train, I like the, the music. Uh, the, the, tr the everything's set up nicely, but I mean, it's, I wouldn't call this any, any great shakes to be honest with you. I mean, it's just, it's just sort of a generic, uh, rip off of pipe mania. I mean, isn't it? I mean, <laughs> no, it is, it is. I, I completely agree, but as a pipe mania game, I prefer this sometimes depending on what I want, if I want to be challenged or if I want to be just have fun with it. I prefer this over Pipe Mania. Well, I will say, I, I, I'm not very good at Pipe Mania slash Pipe Dreams. When I know. I saw your demo yeah. play. But uh, I did sit and play this enough to where I, 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 I did okay. I, I mean, this is sort of like... Did you get to stage 10? No, God, no. No, of course not. Did, uh, but I did I did better than I did on the Amiga version uh, of this. Uh, I, and it is easier so you didn't get to see the bonus stages. You didn't I get to see them, any but of the I didn't power get to them. I saw them, uh, uh, but I mean, and all, I mean, like I said, I, it, 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 you've got everything you would expect. It does have great tunes. There's no doubt about that. Uh, but uh, uh, you know, I, it didn't do a whole lot for me to be honest. It's okay. It's okay. I just found it to be sort of generic. You know, I thought it was incredibly fun for what it was. And what it is, is a Pipe Mania clone that is enjoyable uh, with a train theme. I, and I really like the train theme. I thought that, I think that added enough to fair be fun. Enough, fair enough. Um, we did get some reviews on this thing, Brent. Let's have a look, shall we? We got a lot of reviews this week for these games. I don't know what it was. Something struck a chord uh, with, with these games here. So, um, Let's start off with our good buddy Frodo Winnell, who writes... Uh, he actually has his review split up here. Uh, <clears throat> Railway, he says, I have completely, I have a completely unexpected issue with the, this game, but let's look at the positives first. Well-executed variation of Pipe Media, contains a train, cute graphics, title screen, and cute animation and music, in-game music, more than one song, well-thought-out bonuses and bonus levels, three levels of play, a password system, uh, to allow starting on different stages, which leaves us to the one issue. Given the constraints of the system it's running on, I cannot find any flaws in the game, meaning I have to give it a score I would normally never give 10 out of 10. A 10, Brent. Can you believe that? I, I think that's a little bold, but I appreciate that if he can't find a flaw with a game, he gives the well, game a 10. I think that's very Z9 fair. Z9 really had a lot to say about this one. He writes, I was amused to see this game pick is a variant of Pipe Mania, for which I have a rekindled appreciation after the recent well-fought competition on the Amigos Discord. This version seems decent in most respects, except for one. You can replace an already laid tile with another one instantly, instead of having to wait a couple seconds of cooldown time for your indecision. 
and so you can get any piece you want in a hurry by trivially hammering the button until it comes along. That's Yeah, that's great for me. This mostly robs the game of its usual challenge and intrigue. The balancing in between the thickly entwined tasks of building a solid path immediately in front of the train, but also planning ahead with dynamic adaptation, uh, adaptation for the random piece order and random layouts. What remains is the static logic puzzle of rooting from start to point to finish point with a long enough track on a predefined level layout. But one must progress at least 50 levels into the game before these constraints start to get thought-provokingly cramped. And at this point, where the task is to recognize one to one true solution like Sudoku or Pekoros, these are puzzles that would be better worked out in constructive contemplation rather than panicked and denied by an arbitrary time limit. At least there are passwords so you can cut out the chase, and it's possible one might eventually adjust to the hurried logic puzzle groove. I have played a lot of Picross in the past and seen this happen, but it's hard to see this, not to see this as a broken implementation. Despite otherwise solid production, I have to top out at a 5 out of 10. It's a long way to go there, Brent. Oh. But it gives it a... I, 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 I think that is a fair assessment. Um, but I think also sometimes you have to make your own fun, and I think this game allows you I to agree. do that. I agree with you on that. So, <laughs> by the way, did you have to look this up on eBay for chance? Okay, what'd you I get? I did. You can get uh, Railway plus your game plus do- Bomb Disposer plus Arctic Zone new inbox old, new old stock $29. Wow, not bad. All those games, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I would do it. If I had a Cougar Boy slash Mega Duck, I would definitely do it. individual cartridges? Oh, wow, okay. Yes, all individual carts. All new Very, old not stock. Too bad. So, you, but you, overall, you give this a high, high mark then, yeah? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I really enjoyed this game. I definitely think uh, just for the music alone... This is worth uh, finding an emulator and and Fair firing enough. this up. The music for this is so catchy and, and so just happy. I Very loved it. I'm gonna. I, I wish that it. Uh, uh, I could find the tracks ripped for this, just so I could add the music to my own little things. I really I enjoyed did see it that some much. Tracks uh, for this on YouTube. If you look around, you might be able to find them. They're not too hard. Not oh, too hard excellent! All right, I'm gonna. All do right, that. fair enough. Well. I was tasked uh, with finding a game. I, I had to say, I looked through quite a few games, uh, Brent, to uh, come up with something. But I, I think I... And I even went past this game twice before I got it. And then I have got it. And so I played it. And the game I picked uh, this week is... Well, it depends on who you are or what you read. But we're going to go with Magical Tower, Brent. Magical Tower. A, an interesting, an interesting yes. name for an interesting game. Now, right off the gate, let's talk about the... Uh, uh, the slight issue with the name. Uh, the name in the game is Magical Tower. The game on the box is Magic Tower. So, well, you know, it's all the same. Well, it is. You're right. It's exactly the same, but it has two names. I don't know why. I don't know why that. And and no one could. <laughs> I never read anyone. Why you know this happens occasionally. Who knows? Uh, so, well, we're gonna call it Magical Tower. Uh, this was, of course, this uh, these all these cartridges run on both systems, and apparently this. I found boxes of this that were actually labeled for both systems. So there you go. This was developed by, uh, uh, well, they have it developed by Common, but it was almost all the games were developed by Sash. And again, this is exactly like the, uh, I, put, was the, the I think yeah. it was the Wahara we, we covered, where it was like one company that produced like all the games. Uh, and this one is, this is different. So this came out in 1993, uh, Brent. So what do you do in this wacky, wacky game and it, it is sort of wacky you it's okay kinda wacky. you ever heard of the old rock paper scissors routine you never, never heard of that. Heard well of it. this takes the rock yeah this takes I the have, rock man. paper scissors yes, i know about rock paper you know some scissors. i've played wrestling games that use the rock paper scissors form of gameplay but never was it taken to this degree <laughs> where you are a you're a hand in a realm of other hands okay so picture a walking yep. hand for our listeners and walking around your other hands. And their hands, they're in certain positions. They're either in the scissor position with your little fingers up. They're in a rock position like a fist. Or they're in a paper position. 
and they walk around. And all you've got to do is you've got to defeat all these other hands. Simple. Uh, well, so what do you do? Well, depending on what you are will depend on who you go after in the game. Uh, if you are in scissor mode, you will go after the uh, paper. If you're in rock mode, you'll go after the scissors. And if you're in paper mode, you'll go after the rock. And when you're in the right mode, uh, you will uh, basically, they'll just go away once you once you get to them. That you... Yeah, you'll defeat, the, uh, you'll defeat your enemy and you'll change hand Correct. positions. Uh, it's, it's a stupid concept in a way. But uh, uh, put all this into the realm of a uh, um, platform, a scrolling platform game. And what you've got here is an intriguing g game. I mean, the, 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 the platforming is nothing to write home about. But the actual gameplay, I don't think I've ever played anything quite like this, Brent, to be honest with you. You have the ability to occasionally come across a power-up that will change your orientation of your hand and of course you always change your orientation when you take out somebody right so basically yep. uh that's that's the game you, you'll run around with the power-ups and you'll run around now you can jump in this but you can't jump diagonally you can only jump straight up which is odd and then yeah. the pace of the game is odd it, it's not a what i would call a speedy game uh it and it doesn't run at a frantic rate but there are a lot of enemies you have to you have to cope with, and you. <laughs> it's fun. When do you complete a level? You complete a level whenever you uh, finish off all your opponents that are in that area. Uh, the levels get uh, as you go through. I don't know how far you got into this, but I got uh, I got you know I think I got to level six, uh, and it and the levels just are they change? They really the levels are all almost. They don't make that much of a difference. Sometimes you can get caught in a corner or something like that. But for the most part, it, it just it's the amount of enemies and how quickly you can get to them before uh, with your hand orientation being what it is. Uh, it's got it's got good music. Uh, the title screen's nice. I thought the music. Eh. I mean, it's not as good. Listen, it's not as good as your game. All right, I'll I'll give you that. Okay, uh, I, I'll give you that one. But uh, I you know I thought it was okay. And this is one of the, uh, of all the games I played, and I went through probably about seven or eight, I thought this was the most unique one. I don't think I've ever seen a game quite like this one, Brent. What, what, what were your initial thoughts on this one? Um, I had, I haven't played a game like this, although I think this is a remake. I could be wrong, and I couldn't find the game that I was thinking about. And it might be that I was thinking about this, because I've heard of a game doing this before, but it might have been this game doing it. So I I, I don't want to say for sure. Uh, this is a points game. You play for high score. Uh, progress is only made to get to more things to kill to get more points. There are lots of little pickups uh, that give you points, fruits and uh, uh, money bags and crowns. And the only real... Uh, game-altering power-ups that I can recall were the uh, shoe, Those which the made you boot, faster. Boots, what is what they are. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the the symbol, which will change what right. hand position you're at, and uh, the uh, hourglass, which freezes all of your enemies for a little bit. Excuse me. Uh, I think the game is is cute. Um, I did play this for. I don't know, about a half an hour. I got, I can't recall exactly what stage because they all blend together. Uh, that's something that's very unfortunate about the game. Uh, there isn't really a thing that sets one stage apart from the next stage. It's all just, you know, five layers of platforms and various amounts of enemies. Not that that's bad for a high score game because it does get to the point where the enemies are very numerous and uh, which yeah. makes it more difficult. There's also a time but limit that, that, the, that ticks down. It, there is a time limit. I don't think the time limit ever came into play for me. It does. Um, I, mean, I don't know how far you got into this, but I mean, after a while, it 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 does you it becomes more frantic. I will say that uh, the this thing also has a password system, but it, the password system on this you have to get like I think it was four or five levels in before you get to be get, you get a password. So you don't just you don't get one for every level. Well, and also, I don't, why would you ever password this? Why not? Game? Well, so you can skip I mean, levels. That's I, why, because it does. I mean, the levels are different. Well, it's a, yeah, but it's a high score. Yeah, game. but I mean, 
It's a right, high score it's still, game. It's still uh, uh, it gets it gets <laughs> harder. Maybe you want to because uh, I mean the early levels are pretty simple. You know, once you figure them out. You know, I agree, but I I think you play this for score and for score. I always I prefer to start at the beginning of a game. Um, this isn't, a, but don't think I'm killing the game. I, I think it's a, a fine game. I just don't think that I'm good. I, I'll, there's nothing about this game that makes me want to play more of it unless someone was going to sit down and say, hey, I bet I can get a higher score than you. And then I might grind out a good high score uh, and do that sort of thing. Because there's there's not a lot to pull me in or bring me back. You know, I, I, I do disagree with you on this one. I, I found this game strangely satisfying it really it, there's something about the the gameplay that is real fun i mean it really is a it's fun it's a fun challenge to be able to, to flip to another hand and go after somebody that was just after you two seconds ago i i, I really enjoyed that aspect of it i do also enjoy the uh, the pace and something that's weird you know again i mentioned that you can jump in this but you can only jump uh, up and down, you know, vertically. There's no, there's no diagonal yeah. jumping. That in itself is a. You would think to yourself, that sucks. It's actually a unique gameplay element because uh, there are. Uh, it's just something you don't see that often. You don't see a lot of games where you just jump straight up and down. Uh, well, it, it's part of the design to make yeah. the game more difficult. So you know, yeah, of course I you agree. could also run into the like uh, your like uh, positioned hand. And that, so you've got that, and, you can, and they'll, they'll swap you. There are elements of strategy to it, you know. And one thing I've noticed is I always wonder if you could get to a point where you couldn't win, you know, like where you're a, where you're a fist, and there's a, another fist in there, and that's, and that's and he's the last guy. But every level I saw, and inevitably, uh, and beautifully, almost like a, a a beautiful design, there would be some way to transfer you over to get that last hand. There was never a point where I couldn't finish the level. Which I like that. Yeah, I, did, I never ran into a. But point I mean, where you got to admit that's something either. that crossed your mind. Like, what's going to happen here? Well, it you know, there like a you know sometimes the uh, a change uh, hand icon will come up at the right time or whatever. But there was something. There was a complete. There was something in me that enjoyed completing these levels and running through them. This is a very you know. I think I think the joy that I got from this game is sort of the same kind of joy that a lot of people would get from the uh, train game you covered, and that is it's just sort of a. You kind of settle in and you play for a while, and it's there's kind of a relaxed pace. It's not you're not super under the gun trying to get through it. Uh, I, that's that's an element of it that I enjoy. This is certainly a kind of game that I could sit down and play on. It's a lot like playing like spades or something in a way. That kind of feeling you get, you're just kind of like you're just kind of cruising through and having a good time. It's not real hectic. Now there are the the collision detection in this is tough. I mean it, it's it, it's fair, but I mean if the if the uh, if the enemies touch you. Uh, and you're in the wrong position, you're gone. I mean, even a little. And one thing about it is your guy jumps really slow. I mean, he's a hand. He's not going to be moving fast. And so the, it, it is not <laughs> that difficult for enemies to jump under you or fall on you or, or uh, you know, touch touch your little foot or whatever. I mean, and you're gone. And so you can you can be doing pretty well and instantly get get uh, gets whacked. I mean, it's it's that so they, they didn't make that aspect of it favor the player. Uh, now, of course, that's on your side when you're chasing someone, uh, but <laughs> I, I thought that was pretty good too. But overall, between all that plus the uh, password system, whole nine yards, I dug it, man. I, I thought it was I thought it was pretty darn good. Um, we did get a, a, a review or two on this one. Let's have a quick look here. Um, Frodo NL writes, "What well, looks like a very basic platform game turns out to be a bit of a tactical challenge." While the basics are easy enough, you play one of the three sta- uh, you play in one of three states, and you can only kill one of the other state. In later levels, one will have to be careful in which order to attack the various opponents. That's true. Once there is only one opponent left, you better you you better have the winning state, since otherwise you have to depend on pure luck. See again, we never I never had any problem with that. Uh, will that state changing bonus show up before the time runs out and the ghost appears? Simple but effective graphics and quite decent music complete this package. I would not mind seeing a remake of this for something more modern. 8 out of 10. Uh, we've got one here from Z9K9 who writes, 
This smartly transforms the famous uh, telepathic mind control game Rock Paper Scissors into a game for non uh, for non scanners by keeping the boy he's trying to kill me here the trick trichotomous relation of household objects and removing the guesswork. Playing it induces a pleasant low level fuzz of concentration that won't make the brain explode. Presentation is also pleasant and the tunes are sometimes catchy. The level design brings out a few interesting situations for the mechanics, though the concept itself doesn't develop at all over the course of the game. It's fun to imagine where a new version of this game could go. The enemies could hunt you or run away instead of following your preset pass. Multiplayer could be a hoot. Plus one for originality, 8 out of 10. So he liked that one too. I gotta go back to this word here. Trichotonomous, Brent. I believe is the pronunciation of that one. You want to tackle that one? Sure. Listen, I, I think it was uh, what, Tricky What fish. state are we in? What state is this? Trick Autonomous? Is that a dinosaur? What's going on here, man? <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing here? Uh, I looked up some reviews on this. I found one place that reviewed... I found two places that reviewed this game, Brent, believe it or not. Obsolete Worlds, which we're living in, by the way. 8 out of 10. And uh, get, get off me 88 uh, on archive.org. Give this uh, 4 out of 5 stars. You know he's solid. Um, <laughs> I did look this up myself for eBay pricing. You can buy this cartridge uh, for from Brazil for 9 US dollars. All right. I also looked up the actual devices themselves, Brent. You can get a, a non-working Megaduck I saw go for 30 US dollars. And a working Megaduck sold, my friend, for 142 duck dollars, US dollars. Wow. If you want a black, if you want a black Cougar Boy, better crank up the wide, my friend. $202. $202, man, for one of these bad boys. So, yeah, they ain't, they ain't cheap, no. man. Uh, but uh, I, I, if the components were good, if if the games played as well on the console as they play yeah. on the emulator, I could actually at least understand yeah. that pricing. But seeing you know these played on video, and I know that the LCDs are hard to capture, but the speaker sound isn't hard to capture, and the speaker on these things are absolutely yeah, yeah, trash. Cheap, yeah. Hey, I do want to mention something uh, that that uh, uh, was mentioned. I think you mentioned. I think Frodo too. I think this did get some sort of console release, this game. I, I don't know what name it was under. Uh, I think it was a Game Boy game. So that may be something to look into if that's, if that's your bag. Uh, I didn't see, I didn't couldn't find the exact name. I don't think it was called Magical Tower. So, But I, I think this exists somewhere. So that might be something we come back to. And if I find that, I'll reveal that in uh, the next episode. Hey, you know what we're going to reveal in this episode, Brent? It's time. What we're doing it's next time for episode? the wheel, my friend. Let's fire this sucker up. All right, I'm ready for the wheel this week. I don't fear it. This was so. This was such an easy week that uh, I think the wheel has shown well, us we'll mercy. We'll see. We'll see. So uh, this week, we'll see. What we've added <laughs> is this is. By the way, this this represents the last piece of pie that we had uh, before the new sheet. Brent delivered to my house. A new sheet of pie pieces over here. And so starting next week, we'll be introducing brand new pie pieces that are just hot off the presses. But I've been holding this one back, Brent. The Tatsung Einstein. The Tatsung... The Tatsung... The Tatsung Einstein. You want to try to pronounce that? Look at that. Okay, fair nope. enough. <laughs> uh, we've also got it as our uh, flashback piece. The early 1990s arcade. We haven't been to the arcade for a while, Brent, so I stuck that piece on there. You ready to spin this sucker? There you go. All right, here we go. Let's do it. <clears throat> try not to suck. I'll try. Oh, Brent. Oh, my. Oh, my word. I've been waiting for this piece to come uh, up for a long time, Brent. Pay window. Pay window. It's the Commodore CD TV. The Commodore CD TV, Brent. What do you know about the CD TV? Why do I feel like this is going to be no. a nightmare? <laughs> no, no, we're, listen, we're set. It's a done deal. This thing, you know it's gold because it's an Amiga, man. It's an Amiga smashed into an attractive console box. It's going to be awesome. I'm looking forward to this one, Brent. I feel like this is going to be an FM no, Towns all well, over again. 
listen, the FM Towns is pretty good. <laughs> I mean, that's, I don't want to overbill the CD TV. If, <laughs> it's easy to emulate. The, <laughs> yeah, we're going to be looking at Groyler's Encyclopedia next week. It's, you know, <laughs> it's a good suggestion. <laughs> Brent, you want to uh, talk to the people about your lanyards. Let's get that news out there. Uh, the lanyards sold. are sold. It's a done deal. We are we are sold out of lanyards. That's great. Uh, the 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 lucky few that were able to get in uh, in on the deal have most of them have already emailed me their address. Uh, so as soon as those get in, they will be going out to the people. So and we will be moving on to our next item, which I already know what our next item is going to be, Aaron. I just got to find a place to, uh, so this is like a home shopping done. network. You're going to, you're going to start modeling this stuff when it comes out. But well, yeah, I did model I was the pleased lanyard. with the, uh, uh, the response to the lanyards was pretty, was pretty, uh, pretty solid. What did no one could see that with your wacky background? Good try though. Uh, but uh, yeah, so for all <laughs> you guys that hopped in and got some hot lanyard action, uh, I appreciate that, and so does the Brent. Very cool. Uh, Absolutely, Brent. You want? Let's talk a little bit because we we've kind of glazed over this. Let's talk a little bit about the Thanks for Giving Marathon. It's you know we're just a little over a month away, a month and a half or so. Why don't you talk yes. to the people? What are we doing here? Uh, anyone who wants to have a piece that will guarantee be spun on the wheel and played for the Thanks for Giving Marathon, your time is nigh. It has to be this week, folks. Because we have to get the pieces made, and we have to get uh, the emulator situation worked out, and have the games chosen, and all that stuff. And I know it sounds like we've got plenty of time, but it we goes don't. Like that. Time keeps yeah, on it ticking. Goes fast, doesn't it? So, uh, everyone who wants to get a piece out for that, please do it as soon as possible. Uh, if you are a part of the Discord, you can private message me on there. Uh, if you are an Anchor subscriber, you can send me an email. Uh, all that good stuff. Just get us get us the info. Yeah, we, yeah and it's good. Let's talk about the the event itself. Uh, this will be the day after Thanksgiving, uh, which I don't know if the exact date of that is. Let's look, shall we? Just while we're here, so we're looking at this would be the twenty seventh of November, twenty twenty. It'll be the Thanks yeah. for Giving Marathon, where myself and the Brent, and possibly the boat. He might depending on the COVID situation, but it might just be me and the Brent flying this week this time around. Uh, we will be we'll gather together. For a unspecified marathon. We don't know how long this thing's going to go. I can't remember how long we went last year. Do you hear off the top of your head? Eight hours. Uh, eight hours. That's uh, how long. Ga hot like. gaming action. Wheel action. Uh, live here at Amigo Studios. We will be cranking it up. Uh, this is just to say thank you for uh, all your uh, dedication and your lovely uh, contributions to our charity event, uh, the Amigathon. Uh, this year, everyone excelled themselves. And it was very cool. Uh, we really appreciate that. And it, so this is just to say thanks. This is just a fun time to play games that you guys want to see uh, and have a good time doing it. So that will be coming up in yes. November. Uh, however, next week, Brent, the CDTV, it should be a, it should be a corker, as they say back in the, in the 50s. It should be a corker, Brent. Uh, so <laughs> we will leave you with that. Uh, have a good week, everyone. Have a safe week. And we will touch you guys on the flip side. Until then, please, spay or neuter your mega duck. Adios. Thanks for joining us today. We really hope you enjoyed the show. Quick shout out to all of our YouTube subscribers and Twitch followers. A special thank you to Duncan Styles for our vector graphics and Bartbit for our amazing music. Would you like to keep ARG spinning for as little as a dollar a month? You can do so at anchor.fm slash ARG presents. Supporters get entry into the Amigos Discord channel, as well as their name called out in the credits. Supporters like these fine folks. Anthony Jarvis, Graham W. Vetke, Terry Howard, Gary Heather, John Schaller, The Slow Norris, Bernhard Lucas, Frodo NL, Steve Rasmussen, Chris Foles, Mitsuyama, Retro Algae, Hermsky, John Dackman, and Jerry Dennington. Don't want to explain another credit card bill? That's okay too. You can help us out by leaving us a positive review on Spotify and Apple iTunes. Have an idea for a wheel piece? Send it to us at argpresents at mail.com.
We record live every Sunday at 9 a.m. EDT on Twitch. Hope to see you there.